Welcome back YouTube, I'm Adam Johnson and this is the NFA Review Channel. Today we're going to cover again the Desert Eagle 357 Magnum L5. Uh, this gun looks familiar it's because it's already been on my channel. Uh, last year we reviewed it alongside the 50AE version, had that really cool looking black and white distress finish, the WMD. Uh, during that review, this gun was malfunctioning and I said that I was going to follow up, do a follow up video once I contacted Magnum Research. Fast forward a couple months, uh, we finally got around to it, we came to the conclusion that it was underpowered ammo. So the gun itself has not been altered, has not been tuned, anything has not been sent in. Uh, I was just shooting the wrong ammo in it, sometimes that happens. So uh, I have test fired it recently with some just run of the mill factory ammo you can buy off the shelf at Walmart and this thing ran flawlessly. I'm talking over 100 rounds without lubing it, ran like a clock. So, wanted to kind of give this thing its due, give it some more screen time, show you what it can really do when you use the proper ammo. So we are going to hit that range shortly. I just want to cover some quick specs again for those of you that are unfamiliar with the platform. And I do stress you should probably go watch that other video. Uh, I'll put it actually in the link below so you guys have some better context uh, for some things that I'll probably be talking about today. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get to the specs. Right off the bat, this behemoth of a handgun comes in at an overall length of 9.6 inches, has a 5 inch barrel with built in compensator, has a slide width of 1.25 inches, and an overall height of 6.25 inches. Now, this particular model, this exact one here, weighs 3 pounds, 1.6 ounces, and that's with the aluminum frame with the high quality carbon steel slide and barrel. Uh, now this has a nine round capacity and uh, yeah a lot of firepower in this package guys. Now I want to back up a little bit to that weight. Three pounds 1.6 ounces. Um, sounds like a lot but she hides it well. Uh, I don't know particularly why because you would think it would be really front heavy but the balance point is actually right here under the trigger guard. Um, right right there where it meets the frame. I don't know how they pull that off because all the weight is obviously on top with the steel and the frame is all aluminum. Uh, loaded, I mean, it, it's unloaded right now, but when you have a full nine, uh, nine rounds in there, she bounces out really, really nice. You know, that's a lot of firepower in a package this size and it's really manageable as well. Uh, my wife has actually, you know, small hands being 100 pounds soaking wet and the trigger reach here is at 2.75 inches but she can grip it and shoot it just fine. So, you know, a lot of people that kind of get scared off on this platform don't need to really worry too much um, with the trigger reach and, and fitting smaller hands out there. Uh, obviously, it's gonna be probably a little bigger if you use those hogs with the finger groups. So if you stay away from those and you do the VZs here, you're gonna have a much easier time reaching the face of that trigger. Uh, speaking of the trigger, it is a uh, four pound pull single action only breaks really really crisp and let's take the magazine out let's see here and the reset a little little longer than your typical you know 1911 platform and stuff like that but you know i have a feeling they did that because of the recoil impulse of this firearm uh 357 not as bad as the 50ae yeah, I'll bring this one to the range today just for fun because, you know, it's gold and ridiculous and it's a 50 AE. Uh, so we'll probably shoot that at the end of today's video. But as far as the 357, this thing shoots really linear, guys. So I'm going to attribute that mostly to the gas operation soaking up a lot of that recoil as well as the compensator here. So as far as the specs alone, we've pretty much covered that. You're going to have a nice black matte kind of anodizing here. It's actually pretty non-reflective. Hopefully that camera picks that up. Uh, definitely less reflective <laughs> than this. Okay, this is where we can get really deep into the gas operating system here. And I really don't want to do that today. I'd rather spend more, you know, screen time, take up more of your time out on the range, actually shooting this thing, showing what it's capable of at different ranges, um, rather than stay here in the studio explaining the gas system again. So 
I'll reiterate what I said at the intro of today's video. Make sure to click that link below. Uh, scroll through the video I already did, and I get pretty deep uh, into detail on how this particular gun uh, operates with the rotating bolt head that you can see here, and how the gas system works with the, with the cam at the front, the dual recoil springs and rods, everything. I get really, really detailed in that previous review. So click that link below and get caught up. Yeah, as far as that, let's, uh, let's cut the studio short and let's just hit that range and have some fun because that is definitely what owning a Desert Eagle is all about. All right, we finally made it out to the range today. It has been raining in Florida like a monsoon for the last week and a half. So the studio portion you just watched was over a week ago. So I've had it edited, sitting, waiting. We finally had a clear break. I mean, last night we had a storm from hell. I mean, it woke me up at four in the morning, lightning shaking the house and everything. So if Florida would cooperate, I can do more videos. So we made it out here with the uh, 357. We're gonna start off today with a function test. So because I had issues in the first video with the uh, Freedom Munitions reloads, uh, I brought some, some off the shelf factory stuff. So I'm gonna do three, three, and three. So the first three rounds is gonna be the uh, Remington 125 grain. The second three is going to be the Cellier and Bellet 158. And then the, the last three rounds out of the nine round magazine is going to be the American Eagle 158. So we're just going to do a little function test here to see what the gun likes. It is clean, oiled, and ready to go. Let's not forget these. I should probably put in gloves. My hands are going to be Swiss cheese with these grips later by the end of the day. All right, this will be the Remington 125s. Interesting. All right, that, that one right there was the S&B 158. It's not liking the S&Bs. And now we're out to the American Eagle. Okay, those last three were the American Eagle. So let's do that again. Make sure there wasn't any flukes here, any limp wristing. I'm gonna throw some gloves on. I'm gonna hold on tight to this hoss and we're gonna try that one more time. Almost got it. Okay, I just ejected a live round. She's not liking the Remingtons. Cellier and Bellet. Not liking those. Okay, now we're on to the American Eagle 158. All right, American Eagle 158 it is. Let's use that all day. All right, just to be safe, I loaded a full nine round magazine of the American Eagle 158. So let's just dump this thing, see what it does. All right, hold on to your butts. <laughs> that was awesome. And that confirms that the American Eagle 158s are definitely what this particular pistol likes. All right, let's shoot some groups. Uh, we're gonna be obviously using the American Eagle 158s and the target is exactly 25 feet away from the muzzle of the gun. I have it marked here. So I have my 90 millimeter lens on and I have the lens focused on the target. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. I have not checked the sights yet. We'll see just how accurate they are to point of aim. Windage looks pretty good on top of here looking at the slide, so should be all right. <clears throat> I'm gonna aim for the B center mass. Good Lord, this freaking front blade covers the entire thing. Oh. Okay, looks like I was pulling right, right off the bat, and then once I got used to the impulse, we pulled it right back to center. Let's go ahead and throw another five rounds on it. Uh, we'll, we'll aim for the head this time. All right, let's do those headshots now. Got another five rounds queued up. I'm gonna aim just to the left 
edge of the A and see if I can compensate for what I'm doing here with the right, right side. Good Lord, it covers up everything. I'm gonna have to guess. Okay, let's see what I'm doing here. <laughs> I mean, they're all headshots, one in the neck. Uh, yeah, I think to really squeeze the accuracy out of this thing, you really gotta be shooting from a bench. But 25 feet, I'm gonna load up a full nine rounds and just see if I can dump it and keep it at least within the C, see how capable we are with this. All right, let's see what I can do with a full mag dump. I'm gonna try to get it all center mass. Failure to lock back, but it did shoot all nine rounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like one of them hit on the line. So <laughs> only one or two in the C, the rest were in the D. So we got a lot of torso action going on, but uh, I don't know about you. I sure as hell wouldn't want to get hit with a uh, 158 grain 357. All right, we're backed up to 100 yards. Got the muzzle exactly measured out there at the 100 yard mark. Camera's about, I don't know, 20, 25 feet behind me. I'm trying to get an angle of me and the target. I haven't focused on the gun here though because uh, should be able to hear the steel on the microphone. Got a, wind's been kind of strange all morning. About five minutes ago when I was setting everything up, we had gust up to like 15 miles an hour. Now it's settled down, so we'll see what happens. All right, let's not shoot my truck and let's see if we can even hit this thing. The, uh, let's see what the sight blade looks like. The sight blade completely obscures the entire steel at 100 yards. So let's see what we can do. Dancing left and right. Come on. There we go. Another nick, nicked it there. All right, if you slow down and take your time, it's possible. So we got three out of nine hits. Uh, but yeah, so definitely a, uh, definitely a capable gun. I mean, it's a 357 at 100 yards. Uh, so I would say you can really have some fun with this thing, even hunt with it within the 50 yard mark accurately and responsibly. Uh, so yeah, I'm really digging this thing and as you can tell, it's really working well with those American Eagles. Let's go ahead and have some fun with the Big 50. All right, we moved up to 25 yards. We're gonna sling some of these Freedom Munitions uh, big grains at that sucker. So a 325 grain projectile out of this ridiculous handgun. I love this thing. It's so ridiculous, it's awesome. All right, let's try not to blind the camera with my pimptastic pistol here. Let's see if I can hit this. My hands are so jelloey from shooting all day. God dang, I forgot how fucking brutal this thing is. Woo! Good thing I didn't wear my low cut shirt, show off them boobies. God, I flinched that one. God, you should have seen the mud fly in the air. Golly. Oh my God. Oh, brutal. <laughs> oh, this thing's ridiculous. I love it. Uh. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do one more mag and just get rid of it as fast as I can. Uh, just knowing what's coming is just, it's brutal. Brace yourself, fool. <laughs> oh man, I love this gun. All right, everybody, I hope that was as fun to watch as it was for me to be out there shooting. This thing still has not lost its touch. It is super, super fun to shoot. And the 357 has redeemed itself. Uh, again, this is the same 357 that I shot in the first Magnum Research video that had some teething issues. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and chalk that up to the underpowered reloads from Freedom Munitions. Uh, did not have any issues with the factory ammo today other than the S and B. After I packed up today on the range when we were all done, I had some, you know, like 20 extra rounds left over of the Remingtons, the 125s, and it shot all of them just fine. So she's nice and broken in. Uh, you shoot the good, powerful stuff and you're not going to have any issues. The S and B, when I put it in the middle of the magazine, I could still feel how underpowered it was compared to the other two brands. So as long as you pick a good, powerful round uh, to shoot through it, you're not going to have any issues. Uh, so I hope the distant shooting and group shooting and stuff today was enough to give you guys an idea of how this gun performs. Uh, I would not have any issue, you know, carrying this in like bear country or something. Nine plus ones, you got 10 rounds of 357 Magnum as fast as you can shoot the trigger. Nice and linear, not bad. Uh, and if not, sure as hell makes one hell of an attention getting range toy. The, con the concussion from the compensator is insane. Uh, I was wearing my lapel mic today. Uh, usually you guys watch my videos. I have the stereo microphone on top because we're watching suppressors. Uh, so, but the name of the game today was narration. So I was wearing the lapel all day. So it's going to peak out. I'm sure you noticed that it didn't sound as it would normally would in person. But let me tell you, this one and this one both just thumped the chest and you can hear them echo for miles. So it's definitely really fun to shoot. Uh, huge shout out to Magnum Research. They have been really cool since we started working together. Uh, they've come to all of my events as of recent and they have given away three Desert Eagles so far. That's pretty awesome. So kudos to them for that. Uh, speaking of events, I guess now is a good time as ever to announce the next one. So behind the scenes at the NFA range here, we have been um, building up berms, uh, going through all the necessary steps to get the range running. Uh, Shoot Steel just donated a bunch of steel, so thanks again guys for that. Uh, so the next event is going to be in November. It's going to be a private event with, uh, with vendors, as you guys are used to. It's going to be called Suppressed Fest 2018. So the entire day there will be no unsuppressed gunfire. So you can take your ears off, you can wear them if you want, uh, but you can walk around without ears on and just enjoy the sweet sound of silence. So it's going to be pretty cool. So to not miss any details on that private event, make sure to click subscribe and follow along on you know, all my other channels, Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, stuff like that, because you're going to start to see me roll out information about the event very soon. Um, and let's see, I have a giveaway coming up on my Patreon. So Patreon giveaway is going to be August 4th. Usually I do it the 5th uh, because that's just when I do it, but I'm on duty the 5th. So we're going to do it a day early. We're going to be giving away $600 in gift cards and a Bowers Biddy suppressor. So if you haven't checked, on, checked out Patreon yet, make sure you guys head on over there and check and see what it's all about. I think we're at 89 patrons so far. So given the size of my channel, that's pretty cool. And I want to personally thank all you guys out there that have been early adopters. I know the really early adopters of my Patreon page, you guys have definitely won out. The highest tier I have is 20 bucks a month. And some of you guys have won like four $100 gift cards. So you are, you are, you are good to go. You have won over 400 bucks for not a lot of uh, uh, buy-in. But not really buying, it's basically support for the channel so we can do stuff like this and get uh, high quality content out to you guys at a, on a regular basis. So for all you guys out there that have clicked that subscribe button and that notification bell, thanks for that. Stay tuned, we have a lot more reviews coming. Next up is the OSS HXQD 762. Stay tuned. <laughs>